Hello, everybody, and welcome to New Life Plus. I am your host, Eric Mayer, joined again by Mr. Tom Asmar. Tom, how are you doing? I'm fantastic, Eric. Um, I had a great weekend, and uh, I'm ready to talk about some fun things today. I'm glad to hear it. All right, so we have some more interesting questions, or I'm call it interesting. Some of the internet's most sought after questions. How about that? I see. Gavin. We need we need like a clever title for these questions because right now it's just random ass questions we come up with. <laughs> I think that's a great enough title right there. Random ass questions to come right. up with. This is our segment right now. Welcome back to our segment. Random ass questions to answer. Here's Let's your host, get... Eric. <laughs> okay, we're it's like a really shitty '90s game show. That was the goal. <laughs> I'm gonna spin that question wheel, Bob. <laughs> Let's see. Our first question this week. <laughs> God damn. I hate everything about us. Our first question this week is this is I was um I watched way too many Harry Potter movies over and over again. So of course on TV this week there was another Harry Potter marathon, like every other month there's a Harry Potter marathon. Um but one of my questions was like if you could pick a single Harry Potter spell to have but it's like your only spell like which one would you choose um personally i i would go with accio because you know moving that's it's that's a little outdated for me right now like people who don't know and people who don't pay attention to harry potter will kind of describe these spells like accio is like a summoning spell it's kind of like telepathy you can like summon stuff to you from distance yes and it Seems to have a really long range with it, because in the fourth Harry Potter movie, Harry could, could get his firebolt from basically across the school grounds, which seems a little strong. Yeah, that always, I always question that part of the book. It was never really explained. Maybe it was explained in the books. It's been a while since I've read that one specifically, but like, does it like set it out somewhere, like right outside the stadium, or is it actually like just like chilling in his room in the castle? I assume that he had to be leaving it out somewhere, but is the, I never understood the legality of that. Anyways, that's not the... Because, oh, of the tournament? Yeah. I mean, uh, I th- yeah. I think he, that was always kind of gray area, too. I don't see why it would be banned. Because there really are no, like, set rules in the tournament. True. I think it's just, like, you're allowed a wand. But then you, he was allowed a firebolt as well. But he wasn't. But, like... No, firebolt I, is... He didn't bring the firebolt thing. with him. He used magic to summon it. So I think there was, was like, a loop, magic loophole. That's fair. So I don't think they ever like had defined like we're get, we're getting like deep into some Harry Potter lore here, but like I don't think there was ever like defined rules. The rules were very specifically like you cannot have help from other people, um, which Harry and all the champions broke all repeatedly, repeatedly all the time. Um, and you can bring a wand with you. And then on some challenges, they had other specific rules. Like in the maze, it's like if you want to abandon, you shoot the red sparks up, um, and then like. Yeah, had missions and stuff. So I think it was, like, very loose. It's like, as long as you're using magic and following those very loose guidelines, you're set. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, the Accio spell, like, being able to summon stuff, that'd be really cool. It'd be interesting to know what the limitations of that were, though. That is true. It seemed like they just come at you like a fastball most of the time. Yeah. But it's also, like, can you summon things from other rooms? And it's like, if you do summon something from a room, even if, like, the door is open... Will it come around the door or is it like most direct path? It was there. We never made it like super clear. Like they had the summon stuff that was right next to them or they were outside. That is true. I assume that it, it'd go more, the most direct path. Yeah. That'd be the most balanced way, unless you were a more powerful wizard, then you could figure out like to say, okay, the door is open. Let me go around towards yeah, it's the like, I don't know if they're like actually focusing on the object. Like, they're thinking like, oh, I gotta like navigate it here, or if it's just like, all right, come to me, and it's like it does this thing. I assume it's more like the latter. Yeah, so. but no, I agree. Cool spell, very cool spell. It's laziness spell. Oh, but you I got other ones that are like you could get. I don't know, in trouble with you got like um, what's the open locks one? Aloha Mora. Yes, that one you could like you be a pro thief or locksmith. But what are the limitations on that again? Would it work on it's electrical just... lo- locks, or would it only work on tumbler locks? Would it work on? They used it in the movies, in the books, exclusively. Um, like, and they didn't have any electronic locks. And... That's what I'm thinking. But can you open magical locks with it? 
I don't think so. Because in the first movie, or the first book, I'm going to interchange book and movie because, I mean, they're different, but whatever. But they're going to, like, get the stone out of the dungeon. Or not even the third floor. I guess it's like a dungeon sort of thing. It's, Under I mean, the dog. Under Fluffy. Yeah, you picture it like a dungeon. Um, there's one door they try to get in where the keys are flying. And they have to fly and get the right key that they couldn't use it on. So I think there's, like, obviously, like, limitations. Like, it's very simple locks and stuff. You can't, like break through magical locks or i assume electronic locks would probably be beyond it i would think true but that'd be still really useful yeah imagine getting locked out of your house no i forgot my keys aloha mora <laughs> hello <laughs> easy peasy no but i mean that's the thing with harry potter there's just a spell for literally everything yeah but didn't they go off the Latin language, or am I going crazy with that? It's I think it's, she based it off Latin, or at least it has roots in Latin in some form or another. But it's like if you can say something, like if you can say, "Pen, come to me," and you're like magically inclined, you can have the pen come to you. I don't think it's it's bound by like. Like, the rules I always saw, it's bound very much by your control and, like, your willpower and also, like, your knowledge of the language. Or their magical language, however you want to word it. Yes, I feel like skill is a big part of it, more than the language, because a lot of the spells, and intention, intention's a big thing, too. Well, because they can do, like, the um, silent casting. Yes, but you have to be very skilled for that. Yeah, exactly. So it's like I don't think the language is as much as much of a boundary as you would think. Because like kids in, in the Harry Potter films and movie in books, they use magic without knowing it. Like, true, but so they, but they have the intention, I believe, to use it, which I think is the key. Yeah, I think it's very much just willpower. Yes. So there's really no limitations. It's like. It's like, in, did you ever read the Aragon books, the Inheritance series? Uh, yes. Those were, love those. It was so Fantastic good. books. Recommend. Um, but, like, the their magic was very similar to Harry Potter's. Well, it was, it was based off this language, and they to say the words, and they cast the spells, whatever. Um, they didn't have wands or anything. But then they also learned that you could, like, use magic just mentally. But it, it was, it obviously had like its risks and drawbacks using it mentally, but you could very much do it. It was more about your intention than it was actually cast, like uttering a spell. Yes. Uh, in Aragon, I believe that the language was technically, quote unquote, the truth, and lying was not allowed. So once you said the truth, the world was shaping towards that truth that you said. Yeah, it was, it was very much, the, the language had like special properties and stuff. But even at like the very last book, and I'm more spoiling stuff, but this has been out for years. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't read it yet, that's on you. Uh, but it's at the very end, they learn that Galbatorix, the main bad guy, is able to learn the name of this language. They call it the ancient language. He like actually learns the name of it so he can control the language in its entirety. But Aragon beats him by using magic mentally and very instinctually so it's like control over the language doesn't necessarily mean control over magic itself true true i mean that's just that's just that instance but it's like i feel like a lot of magics are based around intent and willpower willpower yeah Yeah. like honestly i can't think of any that really aren't like that are solely based on the languages or uh, Dungeons and Dragons magic. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's yeah. that's more for gameplay. Role, role playing reasons, gameplay. Yeah. But the spells are technically quote unquote strong. They are stronger. The more the more well intelligence you have, which yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Damn. If I had willpower, I'd be a great magician. <laughs> yeah, right. If I was really smart and magic existed, <laughs> I'd be so strong. <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm already there, fam. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> You're a wizard, Tom. <laughs> I'm a what? You're a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the original question. Well, what other spells would be really cool? Like you've got some of the really iconic ones, like the Avada Kedavra, which is you can just kill people with it. See, uh, sure, I'm sure it has its uses, but it's kind of like not really useful. 
it's guns. It's only useful if you're like, yeah, I mean, first of all, guns. And second of all, how many how many people are you really looking to kill? Depends how much you're willing to pay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, I'm thinking, like, all the, like, really big iconic ones, like, Harry's big one is the Expelliarmus one. Disarming which, people, which disarms people, but it's like you're not dueling somebody else with the wand while you're trying to disarm them. I'm, I guess, I guess it would probably work on other weapons. Probably, I would assume so, or like anything you're holding. Like, <laughs> I'm just thinking somebody holding a cup of coffee. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> running around me to troll. No, Eric, this is very real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I guess it would. You could really just knock anything out of your hands. But I mean, he also uses it like a force push at times too. Like he. Blows Snape off his feet at one point. Well, then, was uh, that the like the second movie when they were dueling? No, it was in the Shrieking Shack in the third book when they like first find Sirius Black. Ah, Snape comes. I think he hits Snape with Expelliarmus and like throws him backwards. Actually, I think like Harry, Ron, and Hermione all hit him at the same time in the book. Anyway, in the movie, it's just Harry, but in the book, I think it's all three of them. Stupefy would also be a good spell. That would just stun people. That yeah. probably be like one of the best like. Probably one of the actually a really good spell. Yeah, it's it's like non lethal, non lethal self defense. So that'd be that'd be pretty solid actually. That's that's a contender. No, oh, write that down. Stupefy. Stupefy. Well, I mean, so our big one so far, we've got Accio. I don't know how to spell these. Accio, Stupefy. Expelliarmus. Expelliarmus. I don't think that's like has a lot of real world. Applications. Applications. Because, like, even if someone's, like, if you're in a self-defense position, if someone's pointing a gun at you and you go to cast a spell, a bullet moves a lot faster than a spell. True. I feel like. Oh, they got that shield spell. Oh, That'd be God. Cool. Um, what is that? Protego. Yes. Protego. I... But what are you going to use that for in real Unless you can stop bullets with it. Or, like, or like they falling a rubble. Lot with it. Like, falling rubble, too? Because if you can stop falling rubble, you can stop a bullet. I mean, that's a good point. You can dodge a bullet, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> How do you think I'm so good at dodge? <laughs> <laughs> you ever see The Matrix? Yeah. That's what I would like. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should have make a Matrix episode. I'm going to write that. That movie is so obscure. It's so good, but it's so wild. Okay. Isn't that horrible? But the first, the first, the the first one's really good. The first one's worth watching. I mean, if you're watching the first one, you may as well watch all three. Just True. Just because you want to finish the story. Like, I'm one of those people who's like, if I watch a movie, I have to watch the next ones. I watched the first Godfather. I still need to watch the second and the third one, too. That's, see, that's the thing. I watched the first Godfather. And I know it's not popular, but I hated that movie. It had a cool story and it's like I want to know what happened next but the movie in, a, in its entirety was really boring I could see where you're coming with that but I thought it was really badass I yeah, thought it was, it was badass no like I said it had its cool parts and it was like a good story but it was like it was just really slow no it's fair it is fair I heard the second one's better than the first one I heard right. the second one's the best one you're probably not gonna watch it to be mm. perfectly honest yeah. just ruined my fun I, I still have to watch it but I never got to it Anyway, I think Protego is... That's pretty strong. It's pretty good. It, re- it would really depend on, like, how well you can use it. Like, if you could, like, shape it into, like, different barriers and stuff, that'd be kind of cool. Or have, like, three or four different people using them and help, and it gets a stronger barrier even with more range. Yeah. So it, it'd very much be, like, how can you utilize it? Well, I mean, a lot of their spells are very, like, or the ones we see anyway are very combat-based. Yeah. Eh. Wingardium Leviosa. Yeah. I also don't like see a lot of uses for that. And I think, okay, time out. Accio is cool, but I think that one might be a better Accio. Because you can put it back, too. That's true, but I think Accio has a better effective range. And Wingardium Leviosa just levit. Actually, I guess levitated. It, they can, like, move it to you and from you. Yeah. Because in, like, the second book, when they're hovering 
cupcakes to Crab and Goyle to like get their hair. Yes. They like they make it move back and forth. So it's like it can clearly like actually makes. So it's probably just a better Accio. With, so, I mean, I think it's a lot less range. Do you want? You got to get that swish and flick right, or you're. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> or you're you got to push. And swish. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> No. Stop it, Eric. No, no, no. <laughs> so this is probably actually a more convenient Accio. Yeah, Accio, I feel like it's like, oh god, I forgot my car keys in that or like in the house or something. Yeah. But then when Gaudi Levios is like, here, let me drink some water. I gotta put it back in the sink. There we go, it's in the sink now. Yeah. And it's also I, th- I don't know how quickly it can move it either. Like if it's like a couple inches a minute, then it's like, oh true. I'll take Accio. True, true. I don't know. Remember in the first movie when Ron hit the troll in the head with the club? Mm-hmm. It was moving pretty slow. But it can move around. He needed to get up off the ground quickly, though. Yeah. But it did they have, like, so? a, a lot of obscure spells to move stuff. Like, don't ask me how I know, know this, because it's kind of, like, it's kind of dumb that I know this. In, I think it's the third book they are in the it's like the three broomsticks or something they're the local pub and mcgonagall's having a conversation with a couple people about harry's parents how they died with the whole peter pedigree and stuff and and they hide behind a christmas tree and to make it move to hide behind it hermione used locomotor arbor or something like that it was like very specific to like move tree how do you know this i was watching youtube really late the other night and people were doing a harry potter quiz and that came up so that's why i know that um so it's like they have very so it like it makes me think like something like even just a small christmas tree in a local pub like when guarding of is not gonna work but i feel like i don't know i feel like it should at that point and also, would it be weightless? Because then you could have super awesome sports like that. Oh, it's like literally that. just like, it makes it weightless so you can move around by yourself. Yeah, that'd be freaking, that'd be that'd awesome. Because cool. then, imagine the applications. You, I think you have to intend for it to move. Because, uh, going back to like the troll thing, in the movie anyway, I don't remember the scene from the book well, but the troll goes to swing the hammer, gets pulled out of his hand. So it was like it was like static in that space. So it was all willpower all over again. So yeah, so I don't know if it's like you have to use the spell to move it more, or it's like once you cast the spell and you're in control of the spell, you can actually do it. Magic's wild. Magic is wild. I wish magic were real. That'd be so cool. Oh, dude, that'd be. If awesome. it was a magic college, better believe I'd not be here. I feel like everybody <laughs> would go into magic college yeah, though. Right. I feel like, but how would you determine? Would everybody was use magic or no? This is like superpower. In my perfect world, I can exclusively use magic and nobody else. I feel you on that one. (laughs) Like, I am the almighty magic man. (laughs) Magic man. (laughs) Magic man. Take me by by the hand to another land. (laughs) That's what you (laughs) God damn. (laughs) Anyway. Yeah, but like. No, now that I think about it, a lot of the Harry Potter spells are very combat based. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, yeah, they were fighting. fighting dark wizards, so that makes sense. But like a lot of the mundane ones you see that make like pots clean themselves and that sort of thing, you never really like think about see how they're cast or like what spells would be used. And a lot of the times, it's just like adult wizards just wave their wands and things happen. I I assume that's what happens when they get a lot better at it. Mm-hmm. But they don't seem to get that good out of it in the books. There are a couple, or, of not, not, or in the movies, or whatever it is. There's just like they don't. I feel like they don't learn much. Like the adult wizards, like the the one the students. I don't know. I feel, or unless they just don't show us that because it's the boring like college stuff. Yeah, I don't think they. I think because you're right, it would be boring for them to show, like learning how to clean a pot, or if it's just like by learning these spells, you can just imply is how to make them work. You can just apply them yourself. It's like, oh, it would be a combination of these two. Or if it's just like, once you get to the point where you understand that it's really just like your understanding of magic, then you can just wave your wand and things will happen because you will them to. I think that's kind of the point they get to. 
True. Like, it's, even if you see, like, when the Order of the Phoenix is battling um, the Death Eaters, they all duel, not using any words. Actually, they do. They use it for very specific spells, I noticed. Yeah, I feel like that when you say things, it becomes more powerful. Which is why maybe when you're a student, you need to say spells. I think it depends, like, the strength of the spell comes into play. Like, certain spells are just so difficult to cast. Like, the forbidden spells. Like, Avada Kedavra, that sort of thing. A story tool so we understand what's going on. You can't just be like, oh, Wilmore Waves is one, that person dies. I feel it has much more impact if he's like, says the words. It makes it more dramatic. True. So... But I don't know if it's that that's because it's just a convenient story, storytelling device, or if it's like if the spell's more difficult to cast. That's why I have to say it out loud. I like to think that in order, like you have to master it, a spell or something very well in order to do it without saying any yeah. words. That's and then, what I like to think. No, that that makes sense. And then the very common spells, like the very common things, are just they're common, so they're just easy to do that way. <coughs> it's common knowledge how to cast the spells. It's common knowledge. <laughs> Um, what else is a good spell? Oblivious. It's Oblivious. pretty decent. It's like, oh yeah, the memory one. Yep. That would honestly be super convenient. You'd never have to be embarrassed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you'd never be embarrassed, and you'd never be rejected. Oh, I would not. What do you mean? I'm never rejected. <laughs> I don't always forgot. Yeah, right. I can't remember ever being rejected. <laughs> <laughs> Be the most confident person ever. <laughs> just alter your memory to make it like you're the superstar. Or alter everybody else's memories to think you're a superstar. That's strong Think glasses. of how many listeners we'd have on this podcast if we could do that. Oblivious. <laughs> oblivious. You're oblivious. Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Like, Expecto Patronum would be super dope to have just because you could summon uh, this magic wispy animal. But, but it literally has zero use. Oh, yeah. No, completely not. I but think, it looked cool. I think it has, like, some side effects where it's, like, it makes you feel good and happy when it's, like, it's around you. And they also use it to communicate over long distances, too. I think that's just the, the like, signal flare sort of effect. Well, no. At, at one point, like, I don't know who it is yet. I think it's Tonks. I think it's, there's a couple examples where they send their Patronuses to give messages. Because that's kind of stupid. Yeah. But, it's, I mean, if you don't have a cell phone... True. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> I never thought of that, actually. Like, at Hogwarts, they don't have cell phones or technology. But it's like, they all know about it. Right? I don't think so. Ron Weasley's dad. What is the use of a rubber ducky? That's a good point. But, like, a lot of the kids... That go to Hogwarts have muggle parents or like a single parent that's a muggle. True. Which must, like, Harry knows about phones. Yeah. He grew up with them. And so does Hermione. His Her parents are muggles. So it's like, why do they never like bring in technology? Because like some technology is just like vastly better than some magic. True. Or there's like no need for them once you hit a certain point. Because like you said, you could if you want to send messages... That are important. I don't even think they had texting in the time of the movies. To be fair. Probably not. It was in the 90s, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like the time frame. And then if you technically were like one year by one year by one year. They must have had like the awesome Razor phones, but that's about it. I'm trying to think when the actual end date was. Not like when the last book came out, but like what the end date of Harry's adventure was. Like in, in Harry Potter world time. Um, it'd be seven years after he was 13? Or was it 11? I forget. I think it was 11. 11? 11. Damn, he'd be 18 and he saved the world? Mm-hmm. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> Clearly not saving the world. Uh, no, I don't know, I don't know the exact date. I think it was like late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Maybe at one point they had cell phones, but it's like, no, we can communicate our own way I guess yeah but even just like a telephone it takes a long time for I know to get across maybe, maybe he was poor who knows he wasn't poor he had, no, he had he had a lot of money millions of 
dollars in gold. I don't know exactly. I'm galleons, gal, galons, galleons. galleons. I always call them galleons. I don't know if that's true, right or whatnot. Sounds piratey. <laughs> Harry's actually a pirate. <laughs> He's a pirate with swiggity swiggity. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, I mean, I think it really comes down to it's like it'd be cool to have a single spell, but like I'd want more. Yeah, it's better to have like the whole set, like because they're all very specific tasks that they can each do. True. Because it's like, oh, move this towards me, or like kill him, or like open lock. It'd be cooler to just like be able to use them all, which is why I think like I'm trying to think of other magic systems. Where spells are more impactful, I guess. Impactful in what way? Like, I don't know. The Harry Potter spells, a Harry Potter magic is cool. But specific, you mean? But specific, yeah. Until you get to like, I mean, there's one battle when Dumbledore fights Voldemort in the fifth book. Where they're like throwing ridiculous magic around. It's like... They're not. They're not saying spells. They're not doing anything. They're just th- like throwing magic at each other. It's, it's just like. But they probably both inspiring. know what's going on. Yeah, but they're both in like incredibly powerful wizards. So it's like, to get to that level and be able to do that would be really cool. But if like if you're gonna pick a single spell, I'm going with. I'm probably going with stupefy. That yeah. Anybody pisses you off, like stupefy. <laughs> Sit down, boy. <laughs> I'm gonna take your lunch money now. <laughs> but no, I know what you mean. Yeah, Superfly. I'd, I'd have to change my mind from Accio to that too. It just seems like it had the most applications. Yeah, I mean Accio would be so convenient though. I mean, imagine playing sports and you're just like, oh, the football's a little too far. Accio. I'm assuming you have to use a wand. Well, never mind then. You do. Yeah. Just carry the one in your like in your gloves. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like Spider-Man casting. <laughs> But think about it. If you catch the ball, you just stupefy everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's right. How come nobody dual wields wands? I don't know. I don't think they can. Yeah, they probably get bound into one wand. That'd be funny. Well, it's also like to cast two things at once, you have to focus on two things at once. Which I feel like is possible, but would also be extraordinary. Not like oh never mind. I mean, you'd certainly have to be able to cast mentally exclusively because you can't say two things at once, obviously. Yeah, but I'm and thinking, if you're gonna just do like two but, quick spells in succession, why don't you do the same wand? But if you're like you're doing stupefy, stupefy, I'm thinking like why don't you just do stupefy? All right, yeah. Oh, and I just channel it through both wands. Yeah. I don't know. At two different targets, I was doing. I feel hand like motions. that's I like a that Pottermore question. You gotta like ask. I almost said Jairo token. That's not right. J.K. Rowling. <laughs> you gotta like go to the source. No, I don't think you ever see anybody do that. No. Like even when they have more than one wand on them. Like there are a couple instances where like they take wands from people, so they have two. Yeah, like when they when Harry had the Elder Wand or Malfoy's wand, or yeah, and like Voldemort at one point takes Lucius Malfoy's wand, so he has his own wand still. He doesn't give it to him. So like he has two wands, he could. So a wizard is just basically. Which actually doesn't make. I feel like they should be able to cast magic without a wand. Because, like. Maybe. Harry, when he's a kid, like, does magic without even thinking about it. It's like, I don't know if that's because they're children and they're like. Magic is not matured yet or something. I don't know. I think it would just be you channel all the power through the wands. Rather mm. than it being, oh god, you know how you have a megaphone mm. and how it just pushes everything out, yeah. So rather than just like screaming from the top of your lungs, yeah. It's like a channel for the power. I see what you're saying. Yeah, because like I don't think there's any examples of people casting without wands. Like Dumbledore casts with two hands, like he uses his other hand to help manipulate the magic at some point, and so does Voldemort. But never does he, like, cast without the wand present. That's weird. It's like, Hagrid uses his umbrella. umbrella which I'm is his sure, old wand. I'm pretty sure it's canon. That it's just, like, his wand is re- reshaped. I always thought it would be cool if they used the Sword of Gryffindor to cast magic. You know, like, enhance it. That was, like, oh, like when I was a kid watching the movies, I was like, 
cast magic through the sword and really cool. That would be badass. That would be badass. Like if you could turn other magical objects into your casting device. But then you but then you'd always have to carry a sword with you. Okay. You'd have to carry a sword with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you can still like use your wand, but you can if you were like in battle fighting Death Eaters or whatever, you could use the sword as a sword but also use it to cast spells. That would be or cool. like infuse spells into it because it's a magical object. Like No. I don't think they infuse magical things in other objects, do you think? Well, yeah, they have enchanted objects. Do they? Yeah. I, like, all the Horcruxes are technically enchanted objects. Oh, yeah. I mean, the sword is an enchanted object. You can't just... But you can't, like, fuse your magic into it. But, like, it, anything it, like, stabs or cuts it, like, takes its power. It's hard. Don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> you just hard and gain its power. Time but no, they like never like. I always thought they like J.K. Rowling missed missed oh. the mark there, where she could like use your magic to help like fuse into weapons and stuff. Would that, be cool. that would be cool, or like the circulate that um the Ravenclaw lady used. Yeah, like the diadem. Yeah, yeah. The... Right. See, that'd be cool. It's like you would, like they have like invisibility and cloaks and stuff. Why can't you have like? A helm of protection. True, like, I forgot that. that like, it erects a barrier around it or something. That'd be so cool. Got to change up the magic now. Come on, JK. What you doing, girl? <laughs> no, but you know, I, f- I feel like from a storytelling standpoint, it's very difficult to Im- implement that sort of thing. Yeah. Because, like, even just, like, the time turner. Remember that? Where, like, Hermione used it to go back in time to go to classes. Why didn't everybody just like, use it? Yeah. Why didn't everybody just use it? So for, my theory on that was always, like, if you go back and read the third book, everything that they make happen when they go back in time had already happened. So the implication is you going back in time already happened in the future. So you're really changing nothing. You're just, like, doing what already happened. So it's like you couldn't change what happened. True. Unless you had, like, an in-depth knowledge of the time magic because like if they chose you knew what was going to happen but you chose to try to make that not happen like in the third in the third book harry gets hit in the back of the head by a rock so that's how he knows the minister's coming down the hill yes with the executioner but harry sees that rock and throws that at himself to what? do it but it's like a very specific occurrence like that if he chose not to throw the rock would he have gotten caught would they have gotten caught or would, for some reason, like, because then that would never have happened prior, so they would never have experienced it beforehand, so he wouldn't know not to throw it. So it's like this weird mismatch of occurrences. Time magic is messed up. Yeah, time, time, time magic's is, really cool. Don't get me wrong. But like, it's kind of freaky. Yeah, there's there's so many things that can poke holes in it and make it difficult to really. Because, like, if you go back in time to stop an event that happened, that event never happens. So future you never goes back in time. But. So, like, are you just, like, splicing reality into a whole nother. Segment? Yeah, universe that you're now a part of. Because once you get back to that point in time, now everything's different. So it's like, are you still part of it or you just, like, get obliterated? I'd like to think that there's two timelines. One where you go back into the future and try to to revert. Like, say it didn't happen, but then you're like, oh, future me, I wanted this to happen, so let's go back and make it happen. And then you're like, oh, that was a bad idea to make it happen, and then you're trying to stop it from happening. So it's an endless loop in that time storyline. Yeah. Oh, God. There's no, no. future. Because, like, if you <laughs> end up getting split off into a different reality than you had before... Where do you go when you like get back to the time you went back in time in? Like, do you stay in that reality with the other you? With the or do you like? Does that you disappear and you take over? So now you're in this new reality and the other reality doesn't have you anymore. Or like, do you get shot back to the other reality where you already fucked things up? <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm confused. <laughs> it's... Um, I have a lot of problems with time magic just because there's so many. It's so hard to comprehend i'd rather just slow that time down they make things so much easier yeah right like yeah. actually like manipulate time dilation or whatever you want to call it 
Yeah, no, that'd be nice. That's actually a thing. Like, in orbit, like, people on the NASA space station experience time differently than us. Because of the speed they're moving. And I mean, that's just not knowing, like, what an hour is, though, isn't it? No, it's like time actually moves differently for them. Because of how fast they're going. I don't understand that. Neither do I. <laughs> to- and, like, I don't totally understand it by any means, but it's like, due to how quickly they're moving, time di- it- called time dilation time dilates for them so it's like they experience things i see i think they experience things slower so they so they just think they see things slower or things are... so it's like what you would normally experience as a week has only been like five days so it's like if you had a watch on and it did a full 24 hours it would only have been like 18 hours or something that's like what that. it would feel like that's what your watch would say but like on earth 24 hours would have gone by huh Wild, I, I don't know how it works specifically or if they're moving faster or slower or something like that but like that's what it would, one of those occurrences would occur mm-hmm. that's actually pretty cool yeah so yeah people on the Earth space station are in different time sync than us or I don't know how you would say time probably yeah probably time sync who knows no, I don't know but no like once you start moving very quickly physics and everything just starts getting screwed up yeah like uh, once you approach like the speed of light Everything's just thrown out the window. Yeah. Everything that we figs, know. Figs don't, just don't matter anymore. They get so wonky. Science name. Don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I should have studied. Physics would have been cool to study. Like, it would have been back, cool, but I feel like, like there's, there's some limited applications in real life. If you're going to do anything, just go engineering. Yeah. Like, it has more practice. I mean, you can obviously, like, be a physicist. And what do they do? Stuff with it. <laughs> Not research. <laughs> True, yeah. yeah. Research. Is... I feel like engineering is more hands-on application. I like hands-on. Mm-hmm. That's, my, that's my favorite thing. But it's, yeah. yeah. I, still, I couldn't be an engineer, though. I feel like a lot of engineers spend a lot of time sitting in front of a computer. True. No, yeah. that makes sense. Not about that. Yeah. Doing it for like video games is one thing where you're like having fun and you're relaxing, but then once you have to start doing work in front of a computer... It changes up completely. Yeah, it's different. It's like you're forced to sit there and you're like you're doing something that's probably tedious, yeah, and frustrating. Like you're going over reports and I couldn't do it. I'd rather read. A, I'd rather It'd be re- cool read and if write it. What I designed, I could then go and build, like with a three D printer sort of thing. But no, like it's like I design a bridge. Now I go build the bridge. It would be really cool. Okay, no, that makes sense. I but I feel like if you're inventing, inventing. Inventing is different than engineering. No, I don't think so. I mean, you have they, to they use have the a engin- lot of crossover. I feel like you have to use the engineering aspects to make the invention work, and then you bring in the creative part of you to make it. The use engineering to figure out the physics and the yeah, mechanical to, to properties of the objects. Works, yeah, and then everything else is the inventing part, which yeah. is the creative part of yourself doing. The, yeah, I feel like a, the majority of inventing is just like once you have an idea, it's like it's no longer you're inventing something. It's all right, you have an idea or a problem to solve, and now it's like you're trying to create something to solve the problem. Is really what inventing is. Yeah. Which I mean, it's super cool, but I feel like a lot of the time, inventing, quotes is like just coming up with a cool idea for something, then somebody else does it or builds it. True, but I. It'd be but, cool if it was like Tony Stark co- style inventing. It's like you're in your basement, like tinkering with stuff, and you're like you have an idea, and you like put it together. Oh, like, dude, if I could tinker like that, that'd be awesome. But my my problem is like, once I get up to the phase where it's like I've designed something, it's like now I want to make it. I don't want to give it to somebody else to make. Then make it, man. Do it. Yeah, but it's like engineering. You don't do that. I mean, you can always learn if yeah, it's yeah. if it's a cool enough idea. Yeah. A lot of things are just like okay, that was cool, mm-hmm. and since you're you're a carpenter you can make a lot of it out of wood mm-hmm. and then you can figure out how to do the gadget stuff later or make it out of metal later gotta become an inventor okay i'll help you edison i'm gonna make a light bulb out of wood blow your mind <laughs> that was me when we were, were you there the, here the other night when we had the fire no we were talking about if you could we're, we're completely abandoning what we were going to talk about today um that's totally fine um if you were to go back in time but you could take like 20th century stuff with you like how cool would that be i feel like you like you show up to the revolutionary war like 
in Kevlar with a sniper, you're a literal god. Yeah. They couldn't do anything against you. Or like, can you imagine? Say you go back in time, you join the revolution, the Revolutionary War, whatever. You start marching, and you turn your Bluetooth speaker on, and as you're marching, there's like horrifying music coming from behind you. The enemies would just poop themselves. But your own friends would poop themselves too. Well, you you assume you told them that what's going to happen. But th- okay, but then we're going back to time magic, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just thinking like, how cool would it be if like if you could go back in time? Then you're ignoring the magic of it. But it's like it'd just be so cool to like go I'm, back in time and have these things. True. I, I the amount of people that you. I feel like like just learning the different lifestyles would be the most amazing thing to do. Yeah. People would probably be like, witch! <laughs> like you show them a flashlight. They're like, oh god! <laughs> Don't kill me! Please, no! Do as I say. Get me you could a Chick-fil-A. You could also be like super rich. Oh, yeah. Like, if you show them how the invention worked, though. Yeah. Would you it's show like, them how it worked or would you mess with their heads and be like, I have a flashlight in my sleeve. No, I'd definitely be like, I am High Wizard Eric. (laughs) (laughs) I am your god. (laughs) Don't anger me, young one. Yeah, right? Just, like, start shooting a gun at, like, a bottle and be like, that could be your head. (laughs) Uh Well, yeah, because even just, like, they had firearms back then, like muskets. But, like, pistols? Yeah, they didn't have anything anywhere near what we have now. That would be cool. Yeah. Or you right. have like one... like Just like the clothes you would be wearing would be so much higher quality than what they had. That, that Even that would just blow their mind. But would you be rolling up with a pair of Nikes or would you be... <laughs> <laughs> I got my... What's the one of those really fancy shoes now? Uh, the Jordans or Jordans? No, or... there's, there's new ones that are like... <sighs> Where are they? They're new pop-up shoes. I don't know shoes. Uh, anything by Supreme? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but like, just like cotton socks, like anything that stretches. They don't have, they don't make stretchy stuff. True. Imagine going in with like the Under Armour stuff. Yeah, yeah. It'd be wild for them. Yeah. It's kind of wild to me too. You but could like... literally convince them they're you're an alien if you use makeup. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> Now imagine if somebody from the future came back to the past and showed us all this future technology and was like, I'm High Wizard John. Not John. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. That'd be cool. Yeah, that would be. That'd be so cool. Would you believe them or no? Absolutely. I mean, if they could prove it. With like technology? Yeah. yeah. If they like showed me something that clearly we don't have, I'd be like, yeah, that's cool. But like back then they'd be like, you're actually a witch. But now we just be like, that's cool technology. True. I mean, if the if if depends who you show it to. If you show it to like some farmer, they'll be like witch. But if you show it to like some government employee, they'll be like, how can I use this shit? Yeah, I guess it really depends on who's seeing it. Yeah. But if they think you're a witch, then you're just like, no, don't worry, I'm a good witch. <laughs> I'm a good witch. <laughs> good, good. I'm not one of them scary witches. Good, good, good witch, Tom. Like in three seconds, or get worse on your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh god all right let's let's kind of try to pull this back into uh, we were talking about we're wizards we were talking about wizards no we were space wizards <laughs> jesus you no, called that'd be cool you could get like imagine inventing your space book just go like a year earlier than it came out it's like here's facebook You'd be so rich. But MySpace was out at that time too, wasn't it? And now you... Yeah, but I mean, Facebook still blew up. True. But and I feel like... like but I feel like you have, but I feel like you have to... about you being a robot. You don't know me. You don't know my life. <laughs> Who was my father? But um, you know what I mean, though. It's At that point, it's just marketing. If, if, he, if you don't market correctly, yeah. then it's just not going to do anything. Yeah, like, no, that's I, true. I could invent... Oh, God. Give me a good idea, Tom. Oh, God, Eric, help me. Um, I can, I, I can make something you. that would make your... 
that could make water warm forever, even in a whole river. Okay. And if I don't, and if I don't tell any about it, nobody's ever going to use it. Yeah. So marking OP. Marking OP. That was a terrible invention. That was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was real. Uh, oh, that was shooting low. Carding that one. Wow. Um, <laughs> On that note, I'm just gonna walk away. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I feel like we're getting to the point of ridiculousness. Um, let's move <laughs> to another question. <laughs> so wait, the best one, Stupefy? Best one, Stupefy. I gotta think so. Yeah, hair, Stupefy. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I really can't think of any others that like stand out that aren't combat based. Like you can't use a spell to fly. Potions. Would you want potions in real life? Absolutely. That'd be freaking awesome. That was that was one thing I always saw in Harry Potter. I was like, why can't muggles make potions? But apparently, you, there's like some spell casting involved. Like there's some wand work involved or something like that. I would assume that they just can't get the ingredients because they need like different things that you just wouldn't find in the yeah, world. Yeah, they need magical things. But I think I think J.K. Rowling actually said on a forum. Or on Pottermore, her website, that, like, there is wand work involved in a potion. Like, if you actually got the ingredients as a muggle and just put it all together. Nothing would happen. You just have, like, a pile of mud. Oh, I mean, that makes sense, because then Professor Fitch would... Or, not Fitch, not Professor Fitch. The janitor there. Would be the... No, would probably Fitch. just... Yeah. He, I, <laughs> if I were him and I could make potions, I'd just be like, you know what? Fuck. Yeah, I'll be a Free. potion master. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Just to be like, I have something to do with it. Yeah. So you know what? That'd I mean? honestly be the saddest existence. Yeah, uh, I'd be so distraught at that point. Like, I just would live. Like everybody I know is a magic user, and I'm not. That's horrible. Because <laughs> like, no one would ever take you seriously. You can't get a job except no. for apparently janitor at Hogwarts. But still, <sighs> so you'd have to go live in the Muggle world. You knowing that the Wizarding world existed. I, I would have to because I would not want to be in the wizarding world. I would not. I couldn't do it. No. I couldn't do it. I mean, you couldn't. I don't think you could survive in the wizarding world. You, like, you literally couldn't get a job anywhere. No, you probably could. But it's just like, it makes it so much harder. Mm-hmm. It makes it so much but harder. But, like, wizards don't need laborers. Don't need a janitor if you can wave your wand everything clean. Oh my god. You don't need to build stuff. You can just wave a wand and it gets built. Fitch is the saddest life. Right? He's a janitor for no reason. Like, you see it more than once where Dumbledore literally just waves his wand and cleans an entire room. Like, in the fifth book where he's recruiting, or sixth, where he's recruiting Slughorn. Yeah. And the house is destroyed. Literally, waves wand, house fixed. Wow. Dumbledore. And, I mean, Dumbledore is awesome. It's just- yeah, I feel like he's like, super strong, but like the the lack of need for Fitch, that's that's really sad. Yeah, it's like, and nobody likes him either. No, <laughs> nobody likes him, and he's useless. But like, I mean, I'd be a grumpy old man too if I was literally useless in this world. Yeah. Oh my god. Could he use potions then? I think so. I think once they're made, you can use them. I feel like the only good thing that he that I would do if I was Fitch is take the wizarding potions and bring them to the Muggle world. No, but then you could get, like, murdered. But, like, what... Wouldn't that be the worst thing at that point, though? That's a good point. Or, like, to actually, like, just take potions and use them and be, like, a... A potion addict? A, like, faux wizard or something like that. You're, you're like, almost a wizard because you can use these potions and kind of mimic the effects, but that's it. Yeah, it'd be horrible. Yeah. So, what potion... I like potion making. I don't know why. Potions are my favorite. It's like thing. cooking, but cooler. Exactly. I also kind of want to take up cooking. I've been watching a lot of Gordon Ramsay on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I'm an inspiring man. Can you just make fun of people? On his shows, he does. But like, he has like an actual YouTube channel where he's actually like, I'm gonna show you how to do things. Okay. So cool. He's he's, he's, a, he's a, like pretty cool guy. Cooking cooking but, seems like a very good skill to have, especially at the point where we're at where. Our life is about to change, and we're going to need to... <laughs> we're going to need to feed ourselves eventually. Wait, people just don't make us food anymore? <laughs> yeah, food just doesn't appear at your table. Blows yeah. my mind, to tell you that much. <laughs> 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 no, 
No, but like, I feel like the biggest thing where I get to in cooking is like, I get really motivated. I'm like, all right, I'm going to try to cook something. And it's like, oh, I don't have the ingredients. I'm not going to the store. Exactly. Yeah. Screw that. I feel like like, I'd have to plan ahead of time. I'd be like, all right, this is what I want to make in this week. I need to go like shop. It has to be a week by week basis though yeah, to go exactly. shopping, and I'm and I can't even think of what I'm gonna wear tomorrow. Forget <laughs> exactly. about what I'm gonna eat. I'm so times proud of myself because I make coffee the night before, like for this new job. Because I get up at like six in the morning to leave oh, at six thirty. Like I've been making coffee the night before, but, so so I can just like plug it in in the morning and have coffee by the time I'm done in the shower. That makes sense. Then okay, no, mm-hmm. no, I'm proud of you. Yeah, You're so it's like that takes. I've also been showering at night. So I don't have to shower in the morning, which is more because I'm lazy in the morning and not so much at night. But it's like, I'm just I'm proud of you. I'm so prepared. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you turning into those convoluted adults? Absolutely. Confounded? Absolutely. Not. Oh, sh- okay. Good, 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 good. <laughs> I still spend all my time doing stupid things. I mean, doesn't mean that you can't be an adult if you do stupid things. Good point. But no, I feel like cooking would be really, like... It's just once you get prepared to start cooking, then it's like, all right, this is cool. I would do this. Yeah. I just and don't... also just takes a lot of time. It does. It really does. You don't realize it until you're like... like unless you're doing th- something just quick and easy. Like, if you're trying to do anything kind of special, it's like hours of work. I mean, even the quick and easy things take like half an hour. And yeah. when you're hungry, half an hour is a long time. <laughs> when you're starving, it's like, all right, I'm just going to make a sandwich. Yeah. Like, think about it. You're cooking half an hour... You're looking at food the whole time. You're like, this is going to taste great. And then you're like, has it been 10 minutes for the thing to be preheated? No, fuck it. I'm just going to throw it in there. If it's in, if it preheats, it preheats while it's in there. It's like... I don't do a lot of pre, like, pre-packaged like stuff just because my dad cooks all the time. So I just take what he's made. Exactly, but... So it's like... But yeah, if he's, like, if he's gone for a week, I, I decline to take out. Yeah. It's like my mom cooks, obviously, but like, she just doesn't like to. No, I get that. I, like making food is just so much more work than just boop, boop, one, pizza. one pizza, please. Yeah, exactly. Or like, yeah. No, I feel like once I'm living on my own, I'm gonna be the first, forced the to. The first few months are just gonna be a lot of takeout. Yeah, and then you're gonna be like, I'm spending too much money on takeout. Like, takeout I'm, is expensive. I'm gaining a lot of weight, and I'm poor as fuck. Yep. So it's like I gotta learn to cook. Yeah. You know what I want to learn? Spices. Mm. Don't I only know salt and pepper? Yeah, like my dad can just be like, "All right, this is a piece of meat or something." And he's like, this, "These are the spices I'll do with it. I'm gonna make it like this." It's like blows my mind. No recipe. True. It's like I feel like that just takes a lot of time and like practice. True. I mean, okay, I'm gonna compare this to video games and league. You mm-hmm. see a new, you see like a champion, or like you see, or you're playing champion for the first time, and you're like, "Dude, why don't I just build?" And I'm just oh, yeah, because they're AP. like items and stuff. Yeah. I get I get that, yeah. It's just like it's practicing it come, like knowing it. And it's come natural to us at this point where just like Yeah, like once you know a flavor and kind of the profile, I guess, then you can apply that to other flavor profiles. Like you know this spice goes good with things that are savory or salty or whatever with this specific like game you play. Whatever. I am obviously not a cook. But we can learn. But we can learn. In our new life. Can we start a cooking channel? <laughs> <laughs> how about this? Eric and Tom's how, cooking channel. How about this? Cooking for dummies. Cooking with dummies. We can put I the... like that. I'm writing that down. We'll have these on our YouTube channel. <laughs> You can see our progress of cooking. Can we, the that would actually be so much fun. Can we do that? I think that'd be wicked fun. Like, I'd be down with that. Start a really like rad shit cooking channel. No, no, no. We just have it on this thing, and then we show them from how amazing we are. Now to... We pre-order something so it gets delivered. So at the end of the video, you can see like the new <laughs> stuff that was ordered. And like, how did they make it so nicely? It was like a horrible two steps earlier. <laughs> they put like fruit loops in there. And it's chicken. That was, oh, what was it? I was eating someone's, it was like, they're making, like, green bean casserole or something. And my aunt always makes, no, I guess it's my dad. For Thanksgiving, either my aunt or my dad always make green bean casserole with this, like, very specific breading on top. And it's, like, it's really good. I was at somebody else's house, and their green bean casserole, 
I had like cornflakes on top, and it just it hurt my mind. I was like, this is really gross. Did you try it? I did. It, it, it tasted good, but it okay. was just like the fact that there were cornflakes on top was just yeah, like it's a little weird. A little weird. Mm. I remember where I was. If the person who cooked that for me, like <laughs> if it's like Dylan's mom or something, and <laughs> she hears something. But you said it was good, so I it doesn't matter. Sorry. It was good. It was See? good. It was just it was weird to me. I mean, but no, that's the sort of thing that's like ours would come out like sure it might taste good, but it's gonna look really bad. What if it tastes good though? Times. As long as it tastes good, I'm happy. I mean, if we can, if it looks good, then we could pretend it tastes good though. Yeah. I mean, we would never lie. Yeah, no one else is ever gonna <laughs> taste it. <laughs> <laughs> we can just lie the whole time. That's how I live my life. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that how everybody gets by? Pretending they know what they're doing, but actually don't know what they're doing. I mean, I'd hope so, because that's what I've been doing. <laughs> I feel like that's how a lot of people exist. Like, I was talking to Tegan the other day, and he was like, yeah, I, like, he's been working at his job for like, at least a couple of years, I think. It's been a while. He's been working at, yeah. So it's, it's been a while, but he's like, yeah, I almost know what I was, we were talking the other day, and he's like, yeah, I know what I'm doing, like, 50% of the time now. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> But when I work, I feel like you have co-workers that are going to help you and support you. I'd hope so. Yeah, of course. I mean, there's always that one worker that's going to be like, you know what you should do? <laughs> <laughs> that's always a bad question. <laughs> <laughs> or like, you know, the boss really likes it when you... <laughs> yeah, right. Jesus. No, I was... I don't know. I've never had a bad boss experience. No. Same. Like, I feel like it's a myth. Like, I've never had a bad boss. Because you're a good worker. There, there you go. Oh, I, you you're, never, you're you, thinking you've never, you've never been a bad worker. Yeah. But no, like, even some people I know who are like, now that I think about it, maybe they were just bad workers. People who complain about their bosses. Yeah. If your boss is making you work hard, they're making the place look nice. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's like, but I mean, obviously some bosses can defeat asses true <laughs> haven't ran into that experience yet no no never. i've had a lot of bosses too how many jobs have i had i've had i'm counting my bosses right now i've had it's like since i was 16 and started working i've had while you count i'm going to explain how many bosses i've had because i know exactly how many i've had i've had two i've had eight I've had three because let's see i worked at treasure valley Okay. The scout camp. Yes. For a number of years. I had two different bosses while I was there. Um, then I worked at the pizza place. Not a boss. Then I worked at the JCC. And I had three different bo- two different bosses there. So that's five. When my internship, I had my boss there. Um... My realtor boss right now, the real estate office I worked at beforehand, like when I was training. And then actually my boss now. So I have nine different bosses. Damn. But yeah, right? And none of them have been bad. Like I've liked every single one of them. Yeah, so I think it's more of a worker boss relationship yeah. than anything. Or it's like there's more nice people in the world than people make, give people credit for. True. True. It's like I was, when John and I worked at <laughs> JCC. Did yeah, John get yelled at? John got yelled at so much. So it's the worker, not like, the boss. He used to hate the um, aquatics director. Like she, she used the she was the head of the aquatics program. Okay. Okay. Yes. And yes. John just did not like her, and she did not like him because he would just give her attitude. It was really funny because he used to come like she's the nicest lady. Her name's Kelly. She's such a nice lady. It's like, I like her a lot. And John would just go to blows with her. It's like, she did not like her because she was strange. And I was like, she's so nice, though. Just listen to her and you're fine. Exactly. But I don't know. John, listen to people. <laughs> John, this is a PSA for you specifically. <laughs> listen to people. Listen. We're your friends. We're here to help you. We're not here to kill <laughs> This is actually an intervention. <laughs> Please skip to an hour and two minutes into the into the recording. 
I know you didn't hear us, so we'll say it again. Please skip to an hour and two minutes into the video. Just clip this part specifically and message him. Like, hey, hey, you. Listen. This is probably for the best. You should, you should probably take this advice. Your life depends on it. I'm Eric and Tom from the future. <laughs> We're speaking to you from the future. Technically, we're speaking to you from the past. Did you ever do a time capsule? No. As a kid? Have you? Yeah. I did. At the old house. Like, before we moved, I we... Did you ever... You know how around the back of the house we had a garden? Yes. Right? Like, under the garden, like, before the garden was put in, we put in a time capsule. Um, then we found out when we went to dig it up. Like, it was a little while before. When we went to dig it up, apparently, Abby and Ian had tried to dig it up beforehand and destroy the box. And it was just destroyed. That's actually really disappointing. Yeah, I was really sad. I was upset. So I was like, we had papers and stuff in there, like old books, random stuff, but they were like all destroyed because like they'd been sitting in the dirt and mud and rain for years because they broke the box of it, obviously. That really sucks. Yeah. I had my old, it was actually pretty cool to find though, because I had like a Yu-Gi-Oh book from when I was in like elementary school that like went through all the cards it was like super cool for me. I got it on, on some birthday and I put that in there. And I got that back. I was like, this was so cool. I forgot I had this. That's really awesome. Mm-hmm. I wish I did something like that Dude, when I was younger. We should do that now. Everybody in the group? Everybody in the group. Get one item for the group. That'd be cool. One item for each member or one item for the whole group? One item per member. That'd be really cool. That would be that really, would be, really that cool. That would also be awesome. I'm going to suggest that. Yeah, we should. Okay. Then we'll get turned down and make our own. Yeah. No, <laughs> Sounds you know, familiar. You know someone's going to be like, that's stupid. One? <laughs> One or four. You know Ty is going to be like, you guys are idiots. True, but I, th- but I feel like he'd be like, if he thinks about it for a little bit, he'd be like, that'd be fun. Yeah. It's just a fun idea. It's not nothing strenuous. Nothing no, it's just like, pick an item that would be cool to some of us. Yeah, exactly. And then in, once we're in the future, 10, 15, 20, 100. God, and now I'm thinking, like, what item would I take? Something that comes to mind is the first Dungeons & Dragons module we played, which is actually framed on my wall. Is it? Yeah, it's in, it's in my bedroom frame. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Uh, Sunless Citadel with Meepo. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Meepo, for people listening, Meepo was this little knoll who, like... They encountered at some point. He wasn't supposed to be a big character, but then he followed him through the rest of the story because it was so funny. <laughs> but no, like things like that come to mind. Like that'd be cool. Or like the old lead figures. Oh my god, that'd be cool. That would be. Honestly, I, think th- I think those are all my dad's though. So I can't. Oh, no, no, we wouldn't do that. But that would be cool. That would be really cool. Yeah. Um, if we had the manliest man challenge book. <laughs> I bet Tommy has that. Yes. That's, we should we should do an episode. Dude, all right, spoiler for next week. We're going to talk about some of our old ridiculous ideas. <laughs> like the Manly Man Challenge is one. That wasn't ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I got to write that down. Manly Man next week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was... that was The thing is, we spread out like 30 events in like three or four weeks or whatever it was. Whatever we did, it did. We had a lot of events and some of them were <laughs> really... Uh, questionable but it was the thing is it was fun when we did it it was fun it was. i was i was smart i was the proctor so i get to watch you fools do all these things it's not i was i should have been really good at one event but i wasn't we'll, talk, we'll talk about that we'll talk one about next all time. this next week <laughs> stay tuned <laughs> subscribe turn that bell on <laughs> <laughs> all right i think on that note we're going to end the episode here. Like I said, guys, like the video. Subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to. iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, whatever. And if you want to learn about cooking, go to Eric. <laughs> Eric and Tom's Ratchet Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Oh, bye.